in case. So I have no time whatsoever to do this right now because I'm in a huge hurry. But I looked outside. I haven't been in my garden in a long time. I've been running around mitigating coronavirus issues for our company and also just trying to get some work done to keep the money coming in so I can try to hold on to my employees and everything else. So, uh, but look, 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 look at that beautiful red. What is that? Can anybody tell me? I'll tell you. This is such a great tree that doesn't get used in um, Northern California much. Let's go down and investigate. And look at the beautiful proteo that's blooming right here. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna try not to get sidetracked here. So here's my totally unmaintained garden. This is what gardens look like when you plant all the Gary Gregg style stuff and then you walk away from it. <laughs> you turn your irrigation on and walk away. I don't even think we've done weeding. There's just weeds everywhere. Um, look at that beautiful Brandigi eye. Anyway, okay, getting closer and closer and closer all the time. What do we have here, friends, family, and uh, anyone else watching? This is Erythrina cycesii from Australia. And uh, you can see down there, it's got kind of a grayish bark. I've let it turn into a multi-trunk. In fact, I've done nothing like the rest of this garden. I'm kind of famous for doing nothing after I plant all my plants. Let nature take over. Um, this is what I'm about to, this is gonna be my tripod. This looks a little sketchy, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, 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 did it. Uh, does that get me any closer? There's like no flowers on this side. Okay, there's one up there, but the lighting's really bad. Whoa, this is not gonna work. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Well, here's a more solid rock. Okay, uh, yeah, it makes this beautiful coral-like flower right there. Can you see that? I can't really see it. Um, there's one, let's see, there. And uh, it goes kind of deciduous right now. It's uh, April, so you can plant on these things growing in April. We don't, this tree doesn't get any water at all. I planted a bunch of these trees at the Oakland Zoo many, many years ago, and they also don't get any water. If you look at the parking lot at the Oakland Zoo, that's all my doing. And you can see that uh, those trees are just parked in the asphalt in there. And there's, I believe there's no irrigation or anything uh, next to those trees. Let's keep walking around and see if we see any more opportunity for good angles on this tree. Um, it has sort of a triangular shaped leaf. Let's cruise through here. I really need to spend time in this garden. Um, oh, look, here's a flower. It's pretty close up. Oh, here's, a, here's one here. I could probably grab this one. Or can I? That's a little too tall. Can I get that? You think I can reach up and get that? Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Look at how pretty that is. Come on, guys. Come on, why is this one not used in Northern California? What, are you kidding me? Why not? Why not? Is there like a, there's like some like wizard out there who's like preventing all of these plants from being used in Northern California. The first one was the Sunset Garden book because it basically just kind of said that trees like this wouldn't grow here. <laughs> I think they may have revised that. That used to be the end all information source for plants. And whatever they said uh, would survive or not, uh, garden centers would only buy the things that they would say that would survive. So these trees were never available to you as an option. And that was the crime I saw before me, the crime against humanity. Um, and so I raged against that machine and said, you know what, I know the stuff will grow. I'd see all this stuff growing in Southern California and I occasionally would see a successful plant up here. And I'd say, I'm gonna change all that. And I'm gonna start growing this stuff up here. And more importantly, selling the stuff up here to debunk the uh, Sunset Western Garden book. It's a great book, except there was a lot of misinformation in it, and a lot of it. It's almost like it was written by somebody who didn't want some tropicals in Northern California. It was bizarre. But anyway, uh, yeah, here's evidence that, you know, stick it in the ground, do nothing, and have a huge, beautiful tree. You could see it could have a really cool structure if you were to, like, trim it out. But um, I haven't done that. Anyway, super drought tolerant. Here is the leaf pattern. Uh, what else do you need to know? It seems to be hardy to at least the mid-20s, if not 
hardier. And uh, I would highly recommend the tree. There's a bunch of other coral trees too. Coral ladies, um, what else? Bid Willie Eye, uh, Christigalli. Christigalli, it's a beautiful tree. It's native to Brazil. But the problem with it is it just looks completely brown in the winter, which I think is kind of ugly. And um, yeah, so I wouldn't recommend that one. And look, here's my 9-11 memorial of what's left. I had all these pieces here. I forgot all about this. I put this in 19 years ago on the day after 9-11 happened. And uh, it was basically meant to symbolize the towers. I only had one tower, but maybe this is uh, before the second tower fell. This is the second tower before it fell. And those are the remnants of the first tower down there. And those are all the buildings around it. But anyway, I had all those pieces and I just came out to console my grief and build that. Maybe I'll fix that up again someday. But uh, anyway, this is Erythrina cicesii from Australia. But a really beautiful lime green coloration punctuated by the beautiful red flowers in the tree. Of course, the birds love it. And I hope you have a great day. Try not to breathe when you're out there. And if you do, run off into a corner somewhere where there's no one around. Take a deep breath, then re-enter.